Time for us to review all the ways in which the media covered themselves in glory this week with our great friend Katie Halper, host of the Katie Halper Show and co-host of the Useful Idiots podcast. Katie, always great to see you. Good to see you, Katie. Thank you guys too. You too. Katie, we got some hilarious stories. We'll start off with one of our favorites on Joe Rogan. Um, so as we all know, Joe Rogan recently moved over to Spotify. And apparently Spotify employees, just like all employees of these large tech companies, are like these like super woke neolibs. Let's throw the story up there on the screen. And they're like outraged that the Joe Rogan continues to be hosted on their platform. But their CEO basically said, shove it. They'll probably not the first time that this is going to happen. And I anticipate there could be some other problems. But it's just so, it, it's always so funny to me, Katie, who they want to cancel and who is good to go on their platforms, right? And this is just the latest example of how, what they try to say is completely unacceptable. Meanwhile, these like warmongers and all these other terrible people in our society right. are allowed to roam free on their platform and all over cable. Yeah, they get primetime shows. Right. I mean, I think it's interesting that um, so many people, we saw this during the Sanders thing, that so many people were horrified that Sanders would tout um, getting some kind of praise from from Rogan. Um, and all the people who said that seem to forget that it's kind of sad that uh, Biden and Warren both wanted to go on Rogan. Um, <laughs> right. And they and were Buttigieg. denied. Don't forget. And Buttigieg, of yeah. course. In fact, so he felt so rejected, he had to start his own podcast. The Decisive Decade. That's such a Buddha right. judge name. For Wait, but, is that what it's um, called? Oh, my God. Yeah, The Decisive Decade, <laughs> That's so right? perfect. That's great. So perfect. That's really great. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, like you said, it's it's the standards. Again, people are, are free to say things that they – well, the, the other thing with Rogan is everyone calls him transphobic, and I would just challenge most people to point to the thing that he said or did that is transphobic. Um, and I don't know if people are aware of what it is, honestly. Um, which is kind of a dangerous trend, I think, uh, which is that, you know, people just get labeled these things and people don't even know why. So there's this kind of group think, this um, group herd. Is that what Donald Trump said? Right, yeah. Herd, 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 herd mentality. Herd mentality. Herd mentality. Yeah. There's a kind of herd mentality that we see um, <laughs> around Rogan and other issues. Yeah. And again, it's like just the consistency where and, and the criteria. What is the criteria right. for what's acceptable and unacceptable? Yeah. And as you said, why aren't warmongers, of people who led, encourage people to encourage the Iraq war, were cheerleaders for the Iraq war? And again, if, if you're woke... In theory, you care about the murder, you know, the killing of brown people, even abroad, even when they're not Americans. Yeah. Right. yeah. But yeah, again, there's a lot of nationalistic, I guess, uh, uh, border defined uh, wokery, <laughs> uh, anti racism. Not only that, I mean, part of what sparked the Joe Rogan news cycle this week was this idea that he floated of um, moderating a four hour debate between Trump right. and Biden. Which would be amazing, right? Awesome. And oh there's this, so all, you know, all these people like, oh, he's an inappropriate, Austin on yes. the view. Oh, he'd be Same inappropriate, thing. and racist. I believe in decorum. He's racist. Okay, Joe Biden is literally the architect of mass incarceration in this country. Right. Just tell yeah. me, who has done more to harm black people in this country? Joe Rogan or Joe Biden? Just answer me that, and then you can tell me about all your Joe Rogan outrage. Yeah, I mean, they should just maybe Hillary can can host it and ask them about uh, super predators. <laughs> <laughs> that could be your opening. Hillary should be. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, right. That would There's be another amazing. story I wanted to definitely ask you about, Katie. This, this, one. this one has been bugging the hell out of me. I had to censor myself there, which is that the press is obsessed with Kamala Harris's shoes. I have no other way to describe it. Let's throw this up there. Kamala Harris wore Timberlands. The internet responded. And previously, I think she wore some, like, Chuck Taylors or something yeah. like that. And yeah. it's the same Chuck. thing. They're like, oh, my gosh, she wore a sneaker. I mean, like, is it that? I mean, cool. sure, she looks cool. I mean, that's great. But like, <laughs> and same with the Chuck. I mean, even the Chuck Taylors, I was like, ah, like, fine. Yeah. I mean, like, average Gen X woman who, like, thinks she's, like, oh, you know. Oh, bless you. But it's just like average Gen X woman who's like fashionable, right? And so, again, I just don't understand like the fawning over this like fashion, like her so called fashion sense is so nauseating. Yeah, well, as Leslie Lee, uh, co host of Struggle Session, pointed out, oh, wow, uh, she wear, is wearing shoes that were popular for nine months 22 years ago, yeah. which I thought was a good yeah. observation. 
Um, <laughs> that was but yeah. I was like, did I miss where these were like a super cool oh, yeah, fashion yeah. statement? I mean, she looks yeah. good. Like, I'm she not saying great. she doesn't, yeah, but. Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah, she has a, she, I like, you know, she dresses in the, it, I like the way she dresses um, sometimes. But yeah, it's, it's also so funny because like, uh, I thought this was a sexist trope. Like, I thought when we talked about Hillary Clinton's suits, I mean, if you're, I guess it's, if you're po- if you're a fan of them and it's positive, then it's not a sexist thing to concentrate on women's outfits. But if it's, if you're critical, it is sexist to look at it. And again, I'm just calling for some consistency. I mean, I like commenting on people's outfits, I guess, as much as the next guy. But yeah, it is this weird, and they accuse us of having a cult of personality. Um, I don't remember, like, you know, waxing poetic. To be fair, Bernie Sanders looks, you know, his his. I don't think he himself would brag about his clothing, um, which I find endearing, of course. But yeah, it's like this substance-free, uh, uh, it's like the Pelosi thing in a weird way. Except mm-hmm. I guess it's, you know, with the clapping. I yeah, guess it's yes. a little bit, be- and the ripping up of the speeches. I guess this is a little bit better because people aren't pretending that what she's wearing is some kind of feminist, uh, anti-racist statement, which is oh, what right. people with somehow the try to read. I forgot about that. Oh, they're, work- they're probably working on that piece right now to come yeah. out, to post on Monday morning. Um, yeah, Hassan Piker tweeted, I want to understand the mind of a person who legitimately gets excited seeing Kamala Harris wear Tim's or Chuck's. Like, what happens there? I know. We so, should do a brain scan. <laughs> I mean, it's them. so true. Like, I want to share your excitement. Like, I wish that I felt those emotions when I see something yeah. like that, and I just can't wrap my head around it. I love your point, too, though, which hadn't really occurred to me, which is, I remember, um, I don't know if you remember Rushma Sojani. She was a congressional candidate back in 2010 when I ran as well. And that's why I remember she ran against Carolyn Maloney. And um, a reporter spent like all day long with her, walking the streets, talking to voters, all this stuff. And then the piece that they wrote was like 10,000 words about her shoes. And it was outrageous. And everyone was really yeah. like, what are you doing here? Right. But then right. on this, in this instance, they're like, oh, yeah, it's like Slay Queen, and this is what we should be focused on. You're right. completely right that it should be sort of anti-feminist either way. Yeah, right. And it's again, it's like, I get it. It's like, you know, what else are you going to focus on her? Like truancy, anti-truancy laws yeah. that like locked up moms for not sending their kids to school. Yeah. I guess it's better to be as Tim's focus as possible. Right. We should when, see the suit uh, that she wore whenever she uh, let yeah, bankers exactly. off the hook. But. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. All right. okay. Katie, yeah. thank, thank you. you Katie. Great to see thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We'll have more rides before you later today.